So, new lens. The question is, what the hell is it? So this thing is a Hayao Hayao 64. This is actually a gift from a very good friend of mine. Thank you, Fabrice, it means a lot. And what this thing is, is a Chinese clone, knockoff, whatever you want to call it, copy of the Helios 44, the 58 millimeter F2 with a swirly bokeh. And I believe that these lenses started production in the mid 80s. So yeah, this bad boy is like double my age. So the question is, why would you get something like this? You know, it's kind of old and heavy. It's feels really heavy. I mean, this thing is basically made out of metal. There's no autofocus, obviously, no image stabilization. So what's the point? Well, believe it or not, this thing costs $30. That's right, $30. $30 for a 58 F2? That's not bad. And you get the swirly bokeh too, man. That's not even a full tank of gas. Like, I really can't complain about that. So like you, I am also definitely interested to see how this $30 bargain bin special is going to perform. So we're gonna head into Chinatown. Thought it'd be fitting for a Chinese lens, meet up with a model and hopefully get some bangers. Can you hang your head a little bit? Could you stick your head out and look towards me? Not towards the sky? Uh, can you... Uh, I just gotta like, stick your head out a little bit further. sit on this kind of corner here and do um, a menacing pose like you just said, like head a little bit to the right and then chin tiny bit up. Head a little bit more to the right. Okay. Stop. Do you think you go back and pose? Can you turn towards me? So good. Yeah, not walking like full on posing. It's pretty good. Same position, but like same general area. That's pretty good. A little bit more to the left. Oh my god, now I have a little bit more to there. Good. I would say if possible, stand like right around here on the edge of this one. Oh, okay, let's do it. Oh. Got it. <laughs> All right. Let's go up there. I like that ceiling lights thing. I wish we like it this time. Yeah, I would say you up here and I'm down here. And I try to get an interesting angle. Do you think you would have to basically be like leaning over the edge? Yeah, like that. A little bit more. Yeah, that fucking red sign. That shit's so annoying. Okay, well, no, no, you, you stay on this side because uh, there's no ugly signs as far as I can see. Are 
Good you, fashion model. <laughs> One more the park. Unfortunately, my GoPro ran out of battery. So here's a little collage of all the photos I didn't get to record. So how was shooting with this lens? I have to say it was actually not that bad. There's only a couple things that I would complain about. One being the coating on the lens. Some of the photos that I took where I shot towards indirect light, for example, there was some on the bridge where I was shooting up kind of towards the sky. The coating on the front of this lens is not that good that I got this kind of weird haziness around the, the model's hair. I'm sure that if I spent a little bit more time editing in post, I could have recovered or made the photo look a little bit better. In the future, I would probably have to just adjust my framing and angle a little bit to avoid that issue. And the other thing is the focus ring. I have to say the focus ring was actually quite stiff. Uh, for example, when I was shooting some videos, it's a little bit hard to keep the lens or camera steady while you're turning the focus ring because it is a little bit on the stiffer side. So it might cause a little bit of jitters. If we compare two photos, one from this lens and maybe a, a modern day equivalent counterpart, I would say it would be pretty hard for me to tell the difference between both of them as long as they're both in focus. My favorite photos, which I absolutely adore were the ones towards the end where we had this kind of yellow and black metal gate in front of her and then these nice yellow and red Chinese signs lettering in the top left. So would I recommend you guys pick this lens up? I mean, yeah, it's $30, why not? Really just the experience of, you know, trying out a new vintage lens, something that I've never tried before is already worth it. I would actually recommend that you guys just buy more vintage lenses. These things are super, super cheap. So you could basically rack up a collection quite fast. Yes, they're not autofocus, but there was actually a autofocus kind of mounting thing that you kind of mount on your camera and it actually moves the lens forward and backwards and autofocuses that way. So if you're someone who's super into vintage lenses, that is actually a very good option for you. But yeah, I have to say I had a lot of fun and it was actually kind of great because I got a new lens. So it really motivates me to go out and take photos and whatnot. Every time you usually get a new piece of equipment, you're like, yeah, I wanna go out and use it. I wanna have fun and enjoy it. Even at the worst case scenario, if you don't really like it. So you spent only $10 to kind of figure out if you're really interested in vintage lenses or not. So, you know, really can't complain about that price tag. This is definitely not gonna be my only vintage lens. I will be picking up some more in the future, 100%. So definitely stay in touch. I'm going to be getting some more interesting Chinese lenses and whatnot from my friend. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like below. Subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys around.